So Fallout 4 has a lot of great weapons from the vanilla game. You've got things like the big boy Fat Man, the Overseer's Guardian Combat Rifle, the Deliverer Pistol, and the Righteous Authority Laser Rifle, just to name a few. However, provided you play through some of Fallout 4's DLC, you can acquire some more great weapons, and in some cases, you can obtain customizations that will allow you to further upgrade some of the best vanilla game weapons that this game has to offer. Today, I'd like to go over what I think are among some of the best DLC guns and weapons available to the player in Fallout 4's DLC. So I guess without further ado, Let's go ahead and start with number 10, and that is going to be the Sergeant Ash Flamer. To be honest, the Flamer is actually pretty subpar as far as heavy weapons are concerned, and this is because you can't really increase the Flamer's damage by a significant amount, and it's also because certain upgrades actually debuff certain attributes like the weapon's range and its reload speed. However, the Sergeant Ash Flamer is actually fairly decent thanks to its inherent kneecap effect, and while this effect isn't quite as good up against human enemies that can heal crippled limbs by using stim packs, it's extremely effective against most creatures. Certain creatures like Death Claws can't even move provided all of their legs get crippled, making it impossible for them to attack you, and other creatures may have ranged attacks that they can still use, but their strongest melee attacks won't be able to reach you because they can't physically move towards you. So because of the kneecapper effect, the Sergeant Ash can make for a great weapon to use against a variety of creatures. You can simply fire this flamer to cripple an enemy's legs, then swap to another weapon to finish them off. If you're looking for the Sergeant Ash, you can purchase it from an NPC named Dejan who's located at Acadia in the Far Harbor DLC. Number 9. The Protectron's Gaze Laser so the Protectron's Gaze is a unique laser from the Automatron add-on that's based on a weapon that appeared in Fallout 3. However, other than the beam splitter that it spawns with, I think it's fair to say that the Protectron's Gaze from Fallout 4 doesn't really have much in common with the original unique laser from Fallout 3. Even still, like all laser weapons in Fallout 4, the Projectron's Gaze is an excellent weapon that should deal a respectable amount of damage to enemies. In fact, I would say that out of all the weapons that use fusion cell ammo, I think these standard laser weapons are among the best. What makes the Fallout 4 Protectron Gaze so special though is that it has the rapid legendary effect, which improves fire rate and reload speed. As you can imagine, this makes the Protectron's Gaze ideal for converting into a fully automatic weapon, as the rapid effect will boost DPS potential. So if you're looking for a good automatic laser, and you would like to acquire the Protectron's Gaze, you will either have to defeat the Mechanist and loot it from their corpse, or you can also pickpocket the weapon from the Mechanist, provided you give her another weapon to equip. Number 8. The Western Revolver when it comes to pistols, the Western Revolver is capable of the highest damage output per shot out of any other ballistic pistol in the game. While other pistols may have higher fire rates, come in automatic variants, or have a much larger magazine size, the Western Revolver will deal more damage per shot than any of them. And a great way to think of this gun is that it's essentially a more powerful version of the 44 pistol from the vanilla game, where a maxed out 44 pistol deals about 90 damage or so, a fully upgraded Western Revolver should deal about 105. So if you want the best use of your 44 caliber ammo, then a fully upgraded Western Revolver will prove to be your best choice. The only real downsides are the high perk requirements for upgrades, as well as the fact that legendary variants for the Western Revolver may prove to be more difficult to acquire than 44 pistol legendary variants. And given that the 44 pistol already has a few unique variants available, you may find that those are more enticing in some scenarios. Overall though, the Western Revolver is a phenomenal pistol, and provided that you can get one with a good legendary variant, it's probably the best ballistic pistol available. If you want a regular variant of this gun, you should be able to receive one from one of the Protectrons in Dry Rock Gulch in the Nuka World DLC. Number 7. The Harvester Ripper 
So the Ripper on its own is a pretty powerful weapon. While it lacks range and has a pretty lousy power attack, the Ripper does benefit from a very high attack speed, which allows the player to hit multiple times a second. Plus, when you pair the Ripper with the Extended Blade customization, you can tack on some additional bleed damage, which can stack and deal a decent amount of damage per second. The Harvester is basically just a Ripper with the staggering legendary effect. The staggering effect can make it difficult for all types of enemies to fight back, including humans, which tend to be less susceptible to the kneecapper effect. And the ability to attack while reducing the enemy's ability to attack you back is extremely useful and should make short work of even the most powerful enemies. While the Harvester is probably not as powerful as a Wounding Ripper, it still holds its own pretty well. Plus, the Harvester is much easier to get as long as you have the Far Harbor DLC. And if you're curious on how to acquire this weapon, all you need to do is go to Echo Lake Lumber and check a red streamer trunk behind a locked door in the largest building. Number 6. The Nuka Nuke Launcher While there's not too much to the Nuka Nuke Launcher, it's still a pretty good weapon, or should I say customization, for the Fat Man Launcher. In fact, the Nuka Nuke deals roughly 48% more damage than the standard Fat Man, and because any Fat Man can be converted into a Nuka Nuke launcher, you'll find that you can also apply this customization to the Big Boy Fat Man launcher and benefit from the Big Boy's inherent two-shot effect. The only real downsides to the Nuka Nuke launcher are that you're going to need a lot of Nuka Cola Quantum, and you also have to contend with the high ammo weight of Nuka Nukes, provided that you're playing in survival mode. On the flip side of this though, Nuka Cola Quantum is much easier to find in the Nuka World DLC, and if you do play survival mode, it is worth mentioning that Nuka Nukes and regular Mini Nukes weigh the same. So if you have to pick one or the other, you're far better off using Nuka Nukes. Otherwise, there's not much else to the Nuka Nuke launcher. If you want it, you'll need to complete the Cappy in a Haystack side quest and make sure to side with Brad Burton over Sierra Petrovita. Number 5. The Fence Buster Baseball Bat At one time, I would say that the Super Sledge was the best slow attack speed weapon available in Fallout 4. However, after the Nuka World DLC was added to Fallout 4, I would say that that honor now goes to either the regular baseball bat or the regular sledgehammer with the rocket customization. And this is because the rocket customization makes both the baseball bat and standard sledgehammer the highest base damage melee weapons in the game. All the fence buster is, is a baseball bat from the Far Harbor DLC with the penetrating legendary effect. And what this particular effect does is allow the weapon to ignore 30% of the target's damage and energy resistance. So if you modify the Fence Buster into a Rocket Fence Buster, you should be able to deal a fairly significant amount of damage while ignoring some of the target's resistances. If you would like the Fence Buster, it can be acquired in Vault 118 in the Far Harbor DLC. However, if you would like to add the Rocket customization, you will need the Nuka World DLC. Number 4. The Throat Slicer Disciple Blade So when it comes to combat knives in Fallout 4, the Disciple's Blade is pretty much the best one available. On average, you should be dealing about twice the amount of damage that you would, provided you were using a regular combat knife. The only downside to the Disciple's Blade is that, like combat knives, they lack armor penetration. So you may find you're better off using a different melee weapon against something like a high-level Mirelurk or high-level Power Armor user. As for the Throat Slicer, like the Pikmin's Blade Combat Knife, the Throat Slicer also possesses the Wounding Legendary Weapon effect, which inflicts a certain amount of bleed damage over time. And because most enemies have no bleed resistance, a couple of swipes from the Throat Slicer will pretty much make whatever is in front of you die. Ultimately, the Throat Slicer is an enhanced version of the Pikmin's Blade, and if you want the Throat Slicer, you can purchase it from an NPC named Caitlin Alden at the Nuka Town Market in the Nuka World DLC. Number 3. The Kiloton Radium Rifle It's fairly obvious, but the Kiloton Radium Rifle is a variant of the non-unique Radium Rifle from the Far Harbor DLC. 
In my mind, I would actually consider it to be the second best rifle in Fallout 4, however, up against the right kinds of enemies like humans or other radiation vulnerable enemies, you may find that it's actually even more effective due to the fact that these enemies are vulnerable to radiation damage. It's also worth mentioning that the regular radium rifle makes use of 45 caliber ammo and generally tends to maximize that particular ammo type's damage potential. So if you want to maximize your damage with 45 caliber, then the radium rifle is the best choice. All the kiloton radium rifle is, is simply a radium rifle with the explosive legendary effect. And for that reason, it's pretty powerful. Not only should you be able to enhance your damage with either the Rifleman or Commando perk, depending on how you play, but you can also benefit from the Demolition Expert perk to further increase your damage to insane levels. Whether you use semi-auto or automatic, the Kiloton Radium Rifle is a phenomenal weapon, and if you want one, you can purchase one from Brother Kane after you join the Children of Adam in the Far Harbor DLC. Number 2 the Problem Solver slash Splatter Cannon Handmade Rifles. So both the Problem Solver and Splatter Cannon are unique variants of what is arguably the best rifle in Fallout 4, and that is the Handmade Rifle. Not only is the Handmade Rifle capable of the highest base damage for a rifle, but it also has relatively light ammo compared to its potential damage output. In other words, the handmade rifle should allow the player to deal a pretty favorable amount of damage per pound of ammo fired in survival mode. The problem solver and splatter cannon are basically enhanced versions of the handmade rifle that have the furious legendary effect, which increases the amount of damage that the player can deal on each successful hit. Obviously, this lends itself best to automatic weapons, however, you may find that it works fairly well on semi-automatics as well, especially when you're going up against enemies with a lot of health or high damage resistance. Now, the Splatter Cannon can be purchased from Aaron Corbett from the Nuka Town Market, however, the Problem Solver is acquired by passing a speech check from the pack's gang leader, Mason. Now, you may be interested to know that it's possible to obtain both of these in one playthrough, though if you miss the problem solver for some reason, the splatter cannon can be obtained and is effectively the exact same thing. And finally, number one, the Eternals Gatling Laser. So there's no question that the Gatling Laser is one of the best weapons in Fallout 4. Not only does the Gatling Laser support one of the highest ammo sizes of all of the weapons available, but it's also capable of dealing an impressive amount of damage per shot, provided the version that you're using has been customized with the Charging Barrels upgrade. The Iternos Gatling Laser is basically a Gatling Laser with the never-ending effect. Now, normally, this would infinitely expand the magazine size of your weapons, which would require you to still consume ammo. However, you wouldn't have to reload at all, which would theoretically increase your DPS. In the case of the Gatling Laser though, the never-ending effect basically provides you with infinite ammo. Now, in order to acquire this specific unique variant, you will need to defeat an NPC named the Rogue Knight during the Amoral Combat quest for the Nuka World DLC. Alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.